Hi guys and welcome to Lizzie Dean Makes. I'm Lizzie Dean and this is the channel where we make, mend and grow our way to a big life on a small budget. Hi guys, welcome to Lizzie Dean Makes. I'm Lizzie Dean and today I want to talk to you about my top tips for making money out of your old goods on eBay. So the first thing I want to talk about is authenticating your bank account with your PayPal account. So when you sell things um, and you take PayPal as your payment method, the money will go into your PayPal e-wallet. Um, so you can spend it via PayPal on other things online, um, but you can't actually then get hold of the cash. So there's an extra step that has to happen, which is that you have to um, verify your bank account with PayPal so that you can withdraw the funds from PayPal down to your bank account and transfer them to any other bank account or withdraw them as cash from cash machines, that sort of thing. So um, I had to take a photograph of my passport at some point. I've also had um, a transaction of one pound go through um, from PayPal to my bank account and I've then had to show the statement um, with that one pound transaction on to PayPal so they can see that I have access to the bank statements of that bank account um, and it sort of proves your identity, proves your address, proves your um, relationship with the bank account. Um, basically for money laundering purposes you have to get that all sorted out. So um, if you want to sell on eBay and you want to be able to get access to that money to set to spend offline you need to do that step the second thing I want to talk about is what to sell on eBay so we live in a very small house this is something that happens very often for us is that we go through our things and we find anything that's no longer relevant to our lives no longer fulfilling its purpose or is surplus to requirements and um, so things that you might sell old clothes and um, so anything that doesn't fit anymore, anything that is potentially clothing for a specific activity that you don't do anymore, um, anything like that, uh, clothes-wise. The only thing you can't sell clothes-wise on eBay is old underwear, used underwear. So this includes pants, bras, socks, tights, anything that would be classed under underwear. Um, you can't sell used, that has to be brand new, so d don't bother with that. But um, shoes, accessories, um, items of outerwear clothing um, and specifically um, targeted niche clothing like running clothes and things like that tend to do very well on eBay. Um, the second thing might be old sports equipment so um, a couple of years ago we bought an inflatable kayak we got several seasons out of it um, it's we moved it's no longer something that we're doing regularly so that was something that we sold on eBay and we made very good money back from so um, compared to the amount that we originally bought it for, I think we've got about 90% of the value of that back um, by selling it on eBay. People make a bit of a bargain and um, you get a lot of the money back. So um, we often do that with things like we bought a garden mulcher for the garden and then we sold that. So it was actually a lot cheaper to buy it and resell it on eBay as a used product than it was to rent it. Um, and we got to have it for months instead of a few days. So um, there's a lot of things like that in terms of equipment for specific purposes um, that's really good. That includes things like hobby equipment. So my husband's into building PCs and um, if he's switching out a graphics card, he'll have a graphics card lying around that he's no longer using. Things like that are really good for selling on eBay as are um, any sort of niche hobby equipment whether that's crafting die cutters knitting needles you know whatever you can think of that sort of thing sells very well second hand on ebay um dvds books and video games um a lot of these are sort of not massively worth anything and they're best just a music magpie or something but there are specific things like um limited edition video games things like that that are sort of more collectible um, and they ebay very well and um old furniture so even if it's not very high quality furniture there are people out there looking for old sort of chipboard um flat pack things that they can upcycle um or you could upcycle them yourself before selling. There are certain um, limitations on things that you ought to sell, um, like upholstered items that are not upholstered to fire safety standards and things, but um, it's it's a good way of getting rid of old unwanted furniture that's well worth looking into. 
the third thing we want to talk about is photography. So once you've got your bank account set up, your PayPal account, you're ready to list these items, you know what it is you're going to sell. The next thing you want to look at is how to get good photographs and what things to take photographs of to sell your items. So um, you need some way of displaying your items. So um, you might lie things out on, on a nice floor. So if you've got a nice floor surface, like really nice hardwood floors, or um, maybe a nice tabletop that you can lay things out on, or if you're um, dealing with hanging items, then I think um, nice coat hangers like this for a start, but ones that have got this um, twirlable hanger part on. So you can just use sort of bog standard ones like this. You don't have to have a a fancy one I always think they look nice but um ones like these where you've got the um adjustable head which means you can hang it over the back of a nice white door or on any other surface and ones like these that you can hang trousers or skirts things like that um so that you can get good shots that take in the whole of the item and um, the other thing is lighting so if you go into a nice um department store or anything like that where places are trying to sell you products so you go into a luxury high-end hotel one of the key things you notice is that they have a lot of lighting so not only do they have overhead lights they have a lot of um, lamps and um, spotlighting going on elsewhere as well different levels of lamp but they have an awful lot of lights going so if you want to sell something if you've got a grey and dreary picture of it it's not going to look good if you've got a nice bright and airy picture of it it looks much more spec it's kind of like when you watch those some um, home makeover programs and they always show the before pictures they're really gray and drab and dreary and the after pictures are really bright and uh, illuminated <laughs> it makes a big difference to how um, good quality happy the item comes across so good lighting is key whether that's natural lighting or um, putting a spotlight on it from a a lamp or something just get lights on when you're taking pictures of these um, items you're going to sell. The next thing is to have a high pixel count camera. So whether this is a camera on your smartphone or whether this is a digital camera that you're using, whatever you can find that's got the highest pixel count, that's the camera to use. You don't really want grainy, horrible, nasty pictures. People want to be able to see what it is they're buying. Distance buying is quite a different experience to going and trying things on for yourself in the shop but you want to be able to see when they say it's got a few bubbles how many bubbles do they mean you know that sort of um, level of detail so good high pixel count camera and the other thing is to show all the key features of the item in the photos the number of photos um, of, of products that have been online that I've looked at for example like caravans where they take lots of pictures on the outside but you don't see anything that's inside if you're not taking pictures of the key things that people want to know about that product, they're never going to go any further, they're never going to buy it. So um, if it's got interesting pockets and running trousers to keep your phone and your keys and things in, that's a key feature. If it's um, kids' shoes and they've got Velcro fasteners, that's a key feature because kids are able to open and close them for themselves. If um, they've got special sort of ventilation in running gear so they stop you sweating, that's a key feature. Anything like that that you can um, pick out that's um, great about that product you want to make sure you get that in your photographs you want to make sure you show off all the different features that this product has the next topic I want to talk about is um, titles tags descriptions so SEO which is search engine optimization when someone searches on eBay for your product you want it to to come up for that hit so you want to make sure that when you're deciding what to call that um, listing that you include all the key information so particularly when um, listing clothes and things I always make sure that um, if it's from a specific place that people you know value if it's got brand name you want to include that and um, if it's for a certain age range of kids or a certain size for women or you know something like that you want to make sure you list the sizes the colors the key uh, what is that item you know is it a jacket is it a dress get that word in the in the title then also get make sure that you get those words in the description and in any of the key sort of um, feature tags on that item so that it comes up well in, in search engines for people looking for that item so um, if there are other ways of saying the same thing synonyms and um, that sort of thing you, you want to switch them in and out so you make sure that you describe all the key features of that product as well as you can 
that leads on to key information. If someone's going to come and they're going to buy something, they want to know exactly what it is they're getting. So if you've got clothes, you want to do um, what size is that item of clothing? What materials is it made of? If something's 100% cotton, that's kind of a, a good selling point as opposed to something that's um, polyester or nylon or viscous, something that's a man-made fibre versus natural fibre. Point that out, that's a great feature. Um, also, has it got fasteners that are buttons, Velcro, zips? Um, you you want to mention that sort of information, that's the kind of thing that people want to know. Um, if you're selling um, vehicles, whether that's quad bikes, tractors, um, cars, trailers, caravans, um, is it road legal? What are the specifications about it? Is it something that's MOT? How long has it got left on the MOT? That sort of information um, about whether or not it's in good working order. The second thing is, for anything else, is it working or non-working? Is it something that can get up and go? Or is it something you're selling really for spares or repairs or parts or um, someone who's gonna upcycle that piece of furniture and instill some new life into it? Is it something that is ready to go or is it something that's gonna require work? Um, also, um, the year, the make and the model. Uh, a lot of things, tech or vehicles and things, you want to know um, exactly which one it is out of a range where they're releasing them over time. So being able to nail down the specific one you've got, if it's an iPhone, is it an iPhone 5 or an iPhone 5S or you know an iPhone 6 or an iPhone SE, what, what is it that you're selling? What's the specific details about that? Um, the other things are, is, is it coming in the box it originally came in? Does it have the original tags? Um, does it come with all the chargers and any other accessories that go with that item that would have come with it when you bought it um, or any items that you've since purchased that you're going to sell as part of a bundle um, and finally any faults or issues um, with the item that people should be aware of when they're buying it you want to be as honest as possible so if you're selling um, a blouse and it's got stain down it you want to make that clear in the description that that, that is an issue um, with the item when, when people know that up front, if they still decide to buy it, at least they're buying it knowing exactly what it is they're getting and you're not going to have any bad issues with feedback. Um, other issues to think about are packaging and labels. So I mostly sell clothes and smaller items um, or massive items that don't require packaging because they're collection in person. So I buy these um, plastic uh, shipping bags, which... Um, I bought off eBay to sell on eBay and I also use rolls of these sticky food labels you see sort of long and thin so you want to put a label on the front with the postage address that you're posting it to but you also want to put a label on the back that says where it came from so if there's any issues with delivering it um, or any issues like that that the postal service can return it to you and you've got some some method of dealing with that sort of issue um, if it comes a, awry. Um, make sure that you only put things in the post that are legal to put in the post. There are checklists of things that you are allowed to post and things that you aren't allowed to post. That also differentiates between if you're posting inland within Great Britain or if you're posting overseas. So um, make sure you check those things out. There are also a couple of postcodes in Britain which are difficult to reach, which have higher postage rates than the rest of Great Britain. So make sure you check that out. Um, postage options and payment options when you're making a listing you can decide whether or not you want to run it as an auction run it as a fixed price and um, have people being able to make you offers and say you want 10 pounds for what if I give you eight and um, so you will need to set out exactly how, how it is you want to sell it what money you want back for it what payment options can people pay by PayPal do you want cash on collection only what are what are the options for paying you for those products also what are the options for postage and collection of those products so um, if you're selling something big and heavy are you prepared if they really want you to to arrange for a courier at their expense to deliver it to them is it collection in person only would you be prepared to, to deliver it um, to drive it out within sort of a 20 mile radius of your, your location that sort of information which you include that in the listing and um, for what your postage options are um, identity things on second class royal mail which is 
fairly straightforward and I tend to put a um, lead time of two working days because I can't always get to the post office immediately to post the item. So um, setting realistic expectations that you can fulfill in terms of postage um, is very important. Um, and then lastly, what would you do if it all goes wrong? So you need to have a plan. Um, on the listings you can say that you offer no returns, so if they bought it, they bought it and they can't send it back to you, that's fine. Um, but you need to be clear of that up front and make sure that that's included in your listing. Um, if you get complaints, particularly um, with online selling, if you're posting things, if they go missing in the mail, what are you going to do about that? Um, so if you're not sending things recorded delivery or something like that where they're being signed for at the other end, so you've got sort of proof of di proof of receipt, um, at least you can get proof of postage from the post office. So keeping hold of the receipts that you get from the post office or the courier service when they come and collect the item and it goes off into their care, that can be quite important in terms of tracing what's happened with it. Um, you at the end of the day as the seller are responsible so if it goes missing in transit you have to refund the buyer and you have to then follow it up with the courier service using your proof of postage um, receipts so that's another key important thing um, but also what are you going to do in terms of getting feedback and um, making sure that, that feedback is good because on, on um, sites like uh, eBay you've got a sort of trust, trustability rating um, over all the transactions that you do as a buyer and as a seller. So you want to make sure that you're giving feedback to the people who bought from you, but also that you're getting feedback from them as a seller because that helps you to sell more items in the future. So those would be my top tips for selling stuff on eBay. Um, it varies. I mean, when you're selling something big, like um, we sold our inflatable kayak, and we sold that in a gear for £210, so um, you can make quite large chunks of money in one go, or you can end up doing what I normally do as a regular sort of flow, which is any old clothing items, and that maybe brings in maybe £30 a month. It's not huge, but it covers some of the groceries um, and day-to-day -day expenses, so it's a great thing to be doing. Um, and it's also something you can do where you sell all your things on eBay and you put all the cash into um, a pot and then twice a year you get to go on a massive Primark haul. That's a good one to do. <laughs> so those are my top tips for making money selling your old stuff on eBay. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please like it below. And if you've got any more top tips on how to make money selling your old stuff, whether it's on eBay or other sales platforms, what is it that you do that you think is really key to making more money out of the old stuff that you've got? If you've got some, please put it in the comments below. Thanks a lot. Bye.